It felt like a loss. Um, it felt empty here. It feel like the caring gone, where there's no one care that much about us, you know, where we live at. Woo, woo. Woo. What we saw in Detroit um, was a lot of predatory lending, right? So we already had a, a vulnerable population. So when the crisis hit, as a um, high African-American community, we're extremely affected. So it's been difficult to, to, to creep back from that crisis. We're losing the fabric of our communities. You can see some places that almost look rural. Um, I was driving through an area on the east side yesterday, and there were spots that felt like they were just fields. I think the process is unclear. Um, given the scale of the problem. It's, it's, it's building the plane as they fly. So um, because things have to change so quickly to um, accommodate, you know, understanding what's working and what's not. I have seen a lot of changes in the past 10 years, the deterioration of the houses, the um, neighborhood where people are leaving, and it's just abandoned buildings and a lot of stuff. So, so thinking about just the history of housing in the United States generally, um, African Americans were, were kept out of a system of being able to build wealth. So, you know, we, we understand that the federal government subsidized the building of, of housing in suburbs throughout the nation. Detroit was no different. Um, African Americans were, were not afforded the, the benefits before the 1970s of being able to easily access mortgages. So, I mean, they were, they were kept in poor neighborhoods concentrated in our urban cities across the United States. And, you know, Detroit was actually and, and remains one of the most segregated places in the, in the nation. So that, that kind of, um, the, the effects of being unable to access capital and, you know, just access some of the subsidies that we've seen in other areas kept certain areas, um, mainly African American and Hispanic, poor. Well, currently right now in my housing situation is I'm renting a house and the owner has not paid the taxes in two years. So it's going to be going up for foreclosure with the uh, Wayne County auction. I can't, I'm not up, I can't go up against millionaires because I'm not a millionaire, I'm not even a thousandaire. So what's going to happen to my kids, my household, if they lose the property and someone buy it? The land bank owns so many houses because of a number of things. There has been the foreclosure crisis um, that existed. There's also been the shrinking of the city. The city of Detroit in its earlier years had maybe a population of well over a million, a million and a half individuals, and that population has um, basically cut in half. So there are a number of properties that have laid vacant and have, have gone to total disrepair and there has been the requirement or the necessity for demolition. Sometimes there's individuals who have just come on bad situations and, and they can't pay their taxes. So the Occupy Buyback Program offers an individual an opportunity to purchase the property from the land bank and pay a thousand dollars for that property. I was lost. I was just stuck. I couldn't believe when I came home one day and saw a foreclosed letter on the door. It, I kind of like ignored it at first because you know I ain't think nothing of it. But then I came in the house, sat down, and looked what it looked at the letter and saw what it was and saw the date the house was supposed to be up on for auction. And it was like a slap in my face. It just scares you. You've been bamboozled. Now I gotta sit here and wonder how long and how much time I got for someone to come and knock on the door. But I made that initiative and didn't want to wait for no one to knock on my door. So I was going to pretty much go try to see about the back taxes on the house. And I stumbled into Detroit Land Bank. 
they handed me a deed in July and it was just like the greatest thing for me because I never owned a home and it was a great feeling. Even though I knew how much work needed to be done and with the house, I felt like I was able to do it and it's a great feeling. So a lot of hugs and kisses to the house and this is what the, the house need right now. I need a big old hug and a kiss on the forehead. That's it. There's not that many buildings on, on this block itself, but there, I just noticed the young lady bought this building right here. It used to be a party store, and she told me she was going to turn it into an art gallery or something. She said, you know, I don't know how much that's going to work when we're in bad need of a party or a corner store or something. We have to go all the way to Woodward or maybe a half mile down to a store, but she got it in her mind. She wanted to turn it into an art gallery. We'll see how that turned out. That building, J JD's used to be JD supermarket. That building right there used to be the old barber shop and as you can see still got the old laundromat right there that laundromat right now is being gutted out i don't know what they got planned to do with that building but it's gutted out there's nothing inside they done took everything outside the building the program is good for those that couldn't afford it but what about the ones that can't afford it it kind of it kind of bothers me because it's not for everyone i need a focus on what I can afford. And right now that's not too much of nothing because of the lack of income I have. And not just me, probably so many others out here. Uh, right now, my condition is kind of like I'm homeless for staying at somebody. I feel angry because, um, because there's so many houses, especially the houses that if you drive through our neighborhood, they was beautiful at once and they just sat there and just rotted out and they could have fixed it up and it wouldn't be sitting like that. Somebody could have been living in them. This whole neighborhood is a, what's called a squatter's community. And a lot of people don't have heat, they don't have windows. Transformers, the first movie was filmed, part of it was filmed on that street because it's about nuclear devastation. They didn't have to use a bunch of computer graphics. They just filmed what's on that next street. As it stood, it looked like a it looked like a nuclear bomb went off. We're on a block that was totally destructive, towed down. Nobody lived on the street, so we came. The building was all vacant, towed up, extremely high taxes, fires. So we came in and what we did was revitalize it. Over here you see a hoop house. We baked the city of Holland Park for years. If we could just get a vacant lot. And the lot had a big hole in the middle of it with about three feet of water. And we baked them for years. And they said, well, what are you going to do with it? And we said, we're going to grow food. So the moment they approved us after just being honest with you, after we fought diligently, they finally approved it. The next day after they approved it, we had Michigan State people from the community. We were building hoop houses so that we can grow food for survival. Come on, you walked. We said, well, we need to beautify because we believe that through flowers and beautification, we bring more people in. And that's exactly what we've been doing. Without initiatives that are geared towards Detroiters who have stuck out the crisis, who have, despite having little resources, remained in their neighborhoods and found creative ways to, to, to maintain their communities, without programs geared towards them, we would see a, just a natural market takeover, right? So without, without programs that try to bring native Detroiters into the process, we would just see an acceleration of that same thing, where um, you have traditional capital and traditional capital markets coming into the city, beginning to figure out ways to take advantage of low real estate prices. We need to find creative ways to bring people back into, back into the system um, and, and, and understand that they already have power. They don't need to be empowered, but they do need to, to have resources and tools to affect the change in their own communities.